Hello and welcome to tonight's programme. We have various topics to cover and indeed in the studio we have got plenty of studio guests in here tonight. I want to ask our panel first and foremost about Sammy Wilson's amazing photographs that were uh, appearing in a Sunday newspaper, namely the Sunday World. Was it right for them to publish them or not? Jerry Adams, I want to ask you first and foremost. Well, well, um, I think it just shows the hypocrisy of Sammy Wilson and the DUP. Um, uh, he was the one that voted in favour of barring nude bathing on nude beaches in Northern Ireland and Ireland. And uh, for him uh, to run about with his magic wand hanging about as an insult to his party faithful. Uh, right, Ian Paisley, what's your view on this? Well, well, uh, let me say that uh, Jerry Adams uh, has the audacity to say that Sammy Wilson is a hypocrite when in natural fact he's the biggest hypocrite here. I mean, he told us 22 months ago that there was a ceasefire. Then the next thing is, he tells the boys to take their suits off and uh, put their working clothes on, i.e. their balaclavas, and go and blow up the Canary Wharf. Um, um, excuse me, Dr. Fancy. Um, I didn't say anything like that at all. I told them to keep their suits on. Um, sorry, I mean, I was not involved at all uh, in that crisis. Uh, I never knew that bomb was taking place. Right, well, Dr. Pizzi, we'll cover that issue in a while, but uh, back to Sammy Wicked Wilson. Did these nude photographs affect your votes in the last election in May? No, they certainly did not uh, affect the votes at all. Uh, they affected Rhonda, though, the daughter, because uh, uh, she put a couple of the pictures uh, of uh, Sammy Wilson on her dartboard and uh, threw a couple of darts into his private parts, uh, prick to prick, if you know what I mean. Well, I don't see how she could actually put darts on his prick, Dr. Paisley, when it was clearly censored. Well, uh, as you know, Mr. Cole, there was three negatives missing. Uh, and we'll not say any more about that. All right, I think the less said about that, the better. Right, well, Jerry Fitt, I want to ask you, do you think the press was right to publish these photos? Oh, fuck, oh, your woman showing it some tits, in it. I mean, they were just right for handling. Um, I wish I had been taken the photographs. Mind you, you'd have needed a steady hand, and I don't think I'd have been able to manage that there, to be honest with you. Right, well, do you think it affected the votes, though, for the DUP? Well, who would vote for that bum there? I mean, he's just an arsehole. He shouldn't have been running around with that bollocks hanging out anyway. And, I mean, I tell you what, I've seen a bigger welt than a centipede. He hasn't got what would tickle a mouse, for God's sake. But the fact that he was over in France, Lord Fit, uh, on holidays, does that not lighten matters a bit for him? No, it does, Ned. I don't see why he's running around naked. Is he hard up for a closer one? Because I have a case catalogue, I'll give him it if he wants. It doesn't matter where you're filling in about. He let the people of Northern Ireland down and his party down. Right, well, that's okay. John Hume, what's your opinion on this whole escapade? Well, I don't think people should be allowed to do whatever they want, so long as it does not cause offence. If Sammy Wilson wants to run around naked, that's up to Sammy. But in, in, in causing offence to people, then I think he needs to keep his clothes on. All right, well, let me tell you something, Mr. Hume. Everything that comes out of your fucking gob is an offence. And let me furthermore say that you have no right to uh, talk about Sammy Wilson, who's a member of my party. Right, Ian, now let him speak. John Hume, continue. Well, uh, Sammy Wilson should go out and buy some decent clothes. Then he would have nobody poking fun at him. Don't forget, all our people have to respect each other's traditions. We all have to live on this island as one. Oh, for fuck's sake, somebody turn that slurry pit off, for God's sake. Right, now, we want to interview uh, Dick Spring. Of course, Dick Spring has came the whole way down from the Republic of Ireland to be here tonight with us. Uh, Dick Spring, would this sort of behaviour be accepted in the south of Ireland if politicians were to run around stark naked? Uh, certainly not, I think. They're very respectable politicians, and indeed, uh, if that sort of carry-on was to take place, then that politician uh, would be removed from the office uh, without hesitation. Well, let me tell you this, Dickie. Let me remind you, son. When Charles Hockey, the then uh, Prime Minister, was doing his gun-running act, nobody was too quick to put him out of his office. Why was that? Well, I, I, to be honest, I, I was not aware of that uh, sort of thing taking place. And I'm sure he was doing it with his clothes on anyway. Well, now, let me tell you here. Let me say this to you. You're the only one that didn't know. But I suggest that you, you're telling lies. The men, I'll tell you now, we, we, we couldn't uh, expect anything else from a Dublin government aid. You're trying to pull the wheel over our fucking eyes, Dickie. We know all about you. Now, Dr. Paisley, we're talking about Sammy Wilson here and not Charles Hawkey. 
Fuck Sammy Wilson. I'm fed up talking about him. It's been a pain in my backside and my daughter's backside uh, for too long. And I don't mean that literally, of course. Uh, we're just fed up with him. Right, well, Jerry Fit, it's a matter of uh, keeping your clothes on, isn't it? Here, hello, in a minute. I never took my fucking clothes off. No, I mean Sammy Wilson. Oh, yes, so I keep them on them at all, but happy. Uh, I mean, let me tell you something. I would never have done that day. Well, let me tell you something, Jerry. You couldn't afford to go to France in the first place to strip. Right. Let's just sit me down here, gentlemen. We we'll have Sir Patrick Mayhew, the Secretary of State for Northern Ireland here. Sir Patrick Mayhew, would you run about bollock naked in France? No, I certainly would not. And uh, why should I run about bollock naked in France when I can run about bollock naked in England? Um, when you're in the public eye, and I uh, don't mean that literally, uh, when you're in the public eye, you will have uh, more focused, uh, more focus uh, upon you by the British media, the radio, and the press, etc. And surely, Sir Patrick, the press or the media never took those photographs of Sammy Wilson. Obviously, Sammy had a camera with a 10-second or a 12-second delay, and uh, before they actually took the photograph, he went and posed, and therefore he took the photographs himself. Well, in that case, that's his own fucking fault, and I have no sympathy for a man who's meant to represent the Democratic Unionist Party. If he wants to run around bollock naked, then that's fucking his problem. Right, well, obviously, uh, we asked Sammy Wilson to appear here tonight to defend himself, but he declined the offer, saying, I'll get you in the long grass. Now, I wonder, does that mean, I'll get you in the long grass? Well, fuck, you know what I mean. But say no more. Uh, he says he's skint and uh, he hasn't got the money to buy clothes. But anyway, say no more. Jerry Adams, do you think Sammy Wilson should remain or will remain in the DUP? Well, um, uh, I don't know and I don't care. But uh, I do know what the new DUP stands for. And that is Democrats undressed publicly. Ah, uh, Mr. Adams, you're pushing the fucking boat out, son. Any more of that now, but stick my boot in you. Right, now, on a final note, Dr. Paisley, do you think the press should have published photos of uh, Sharon Rivers also? I thought it was a bit unfair. Yes, of course, because uh, she, must have, uh, she must have known the risks involved in flashing her jerry fits in public. Here, fucking hell on, keep me here to this. Uh, uh, if you'd your chance, Jerry, you'd be well into it, so never mind out of it, now shut your face. Right, now, Willie McRae, I'm going to ask you, what do you think about Sammy? Uh, and why do you think Sammy took his clothes off? Well, it's certainly very hot in the south of France. And I'll tell you, if I'd have had that big girl with me, I'd have had her kecks ripped off here in Northern Ireland. I would not wait it until we went to France. So Sammy was right. Well, if your man who's anything like her singing, the Reverend William McRae, would just keep them on. Do you think the DUP should have reprimanded Sammy Wilson for this? Certainly not. It's not the DUP that's selling Ulster down the river. It's David Trimble and the Ulster Unionist Party. Willie, Willie, fuck's sake, stick this thing up for fuck's sake. Um, I, I think you'd do a better job if you stuck this thing in instead of coming off with the same old rhetoric all the time. Uh, who do you think you're talking to, Mr. Adams? I'm not sitting here with a gun in my hand under the table. Uh, nor am I. I'm sitting here with my dick and my hand under the table, you should know. Right, now, I think that's a typical Republican coming off with answers like that. They can't keep their hands on their tools. Right, now, come on, gentlemen, for fuck's sake, settle it down a bit. John Hume, try and sort this out. Right, what we need here is dialogue from both sections of our communities. Both traditions need to respect each other's opinions and culture, and we must move forward. Listen to the fucking uh, white Martin Luther King. Shut your fucking face and away with you. Uh, I won't get a hair cut, you scruffy get. If you can't manage your hair, uh, your throat will do nicely if you want to get both of them cut. It'll do me all right. Come on now, gentlemen, this is getting a little bit out of order. Right now, we're going to move away from the politicians and speak to Barry McGuigan. Barry McGuigan, obviously you've been affected by the press in more ways than one. Do you think this will have a strain on Sammy Wilson? Well, uh, I was straining to see what it was he had uh, in those photographs. Uh, it's bound to have an effect on Sammy because, I mean, I wouldn't like everyone to see my burrows and my tickling stick hanging out. Fuck's sake, we'll have a fucking case here, all right. A fucking nutcase, boy. Let me tell you something. I'd love to see you making a comeback into the ring again. So we can watch you getting your bollocks knocked in day after day, night after night. You're a cert bit and a fixed dude, son. Right, right, come on now, lay off him. Chris Eubank, you have had bad press as well. The press have invaded your privacy. How do you think Sammy Wilson feels about these photographs and that? Well, let me say this here. 
that I feel very sorry for Sammy wasn't because um, he decided to sue a newspaper because his penis is too small. Um, the fact that if Sammy Wilson had have had a big penis, um, he wouldn't have sued the newspapers because um, I think he's just embarrassed and that's why he's decided to uh, sue the newspaper. So, I mean, I ask you, Chris, if you were in the, the south of France on holiday with a big school teacher such as Shan, Shan Rivers, would you have went bollock naked? Well, let me say this here. I don't think my wife Sandra would have uh, allowed me to do this because she would have objected very strongly. Well, I think we've said enough on this issue, but just food for thought. Sammy Wilson brings a whole new meaning to the school dinner spanking sessions, as I'm sure you've all read about. He's the one that objected to the light-hearted fun and entertainment being dished out, and indeed got the boot into Sandy Blair and Junior Walker over this incident. But I think both of these gentlemen have had the last laugh. Do you? Now, it might seem strange to some, but it's true that paramilitaries are using a point system to determine what sort of punishment gets dished out to the individuals. Now, just an example, for instance, if your son was caught breaking a window, the paramilitaries would come round and say to him, right, you've got ten points against you. Now, if you go through the fifty-point barrier, you're bollocksed. Now, Jerry Adams, is this true? Um, no, uh, it's normally fifteen points for breaking a window. Uh, it depends whose window it was, of course. I mean, if it was your own window, for instance, I reckon the hurley sticks would be brought out. Um, since when did hurley sticks fire bullets? Uh, I don't think so. So are you saying this is uh, a point system used by paramilitaries on both sides? Yes, there is. And uh, before you criticise, I think this is a better method because uh, young hoodlums um, are, are getting a second chance uh, and indeed maybe a third chance. Uh, right, well... Ian Paisley, do you agree with this point system? I certainly do not uh, agree with this point system. The next thing I'll be introducing is uh, a yellow and red card, uh, a yellow for a bootin' and red for lab. That's a lot of bollocks. I say leave it to the RUC and let them sort it out. What do you mean you want the RUC to sort out the kickings and start the shootings? I don't think so. Jerry Adams, do you think the RUC can handle thuggery? Um, maybe a bit of buggery, but I don't know about thuggery. Ah, uh, here, here, we're talking about the RUC, Mr. Adams, not that dirty paedophile fucking priests. Right now, come on, gentlemen, settle it down, though there's no need for that. Now, the Reverend William McCray, we want to ask you, does this point system work? No, it certainly does not, because let me, let me say, you're only giving these gangsters a chance to do it again. And I suggest that it's, it's time to chop their hands off. I mean, they would look a bit funny breaking into people's houses. I'd love to see them trying to lift a television or a video then with their hands chopped off. Right, well, Barry McGuigan, uh, could, you, could you think of a way that people could get away with, uh, without getting beaten up or whatever else? Is the point system working or what? Well, here, uh, uh, they could uh, move country, or uh, they could join a boxing club, and uh, that would keep them out of trouble, and it would give them something interesting to do. I like what, uh, knocking each other's bollocks in. Fuck's sake, Barry, you're polluting the air. What they need to do is go and join the army. Well, well, if I can say, um, we have vacancies in the Belfast Brigade, and, and, and if anyone wants an application form, uh, and, uh, We'll send it out to you, and you'll get an interview with uh, Alex Maskey. I think I'd rather have an interview with Saddam Hussein. Well, Jerry Adams, what criteria do you need to join the Belfast Brigade? Well, um, first and foremost, you need to be honest. Um, a, a, a non-smoker, and uh, preferably a non-drinker, but definitely a non-smoker, because uh, one of our volunteers, uh, Cigarette End, was a bit close to high explosives. And it proved to be highly costly. Um, he wasted the explosives, which we weren't too happy about. Well, what about the gentleman in question who was smoking the cigarette? Well, we haven't seen him about, but uh, we don't know where he is. But he may turn up at some point. Right, well, well trying to take these young people to the streets doesn't really help John Hume, does it? Well, let me tell you something. If they're off the streets and in their houses, then they're okay. They're out of harm's way. What we need to do is get more community centres built. We need the government to put more money into into projects uh, for young people. Listen, let me say this here to you, Mr. Hume. You're talking the biggest lot of bollocks. Now, I really do think that this is the way forward. 
I mean, I've already said they should be off the street and in their houses. Aye, but whose fucking houses are they in? Some old poor fuckers' house, cleaning them out. That's what they're doing. Right, well, Jerry, if it does the point system work, or does it not, or is it a lot of old bollocks? Well, uh, yes, it does uh, work. I think it's a deterrent to try and stop these young hoods uh, from breaking the law. I mean, if I caught someone breaking into my house, I'd break his fucking legs for him. Well, let me say this here to you, Mr. Vitt. I don't know why anyone would want to break into your house, because there's fuck all in it, only fresh air. Uh, 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 there is, uh, there is something in it, there's, uh, well, fuck when I remember I'll come to it, but there is something in it. Right now, the, uh, the Reverend William McRae, is this point system going to work or not? No, it's certainly not going to work. And I've been at some of the families of these young men who've been beaten, with bar sticks, and some have even had nails embedded in their skin. Well, Jesus Christ had nails embedded into his skin, and I don't hear anybody fucking you up and about that there. Ah, but hold on, they weren't at the end of the baseball bat, were they, Mr. Fit? Ah, uh, you're about the end of this fucking boot here if you don't shut your face. Right, gentlemen, come on now, cool down for fuck's sake. Right, so Patrick Mayhew, we've covered this subject before, and you said that you're going to do something about it, you're in the British government. When are you going to get the finger out and do something about it? We haven't seen any evidence of this. Well, the, uh... Plain truth is that the British government uh, forgot all about it. Uh, but we will find the time to deal with this issue, uh, preferably in the year 2000. That's not right, you fat bastard. You have slapped the fucking... Right, come on, gentlemen, for fuck's sake, sir, that I'll stick this bottle in his face. Right now, for God's sake, come on, give it over. Right, Ian Paisley, this new party was voted in on the May the 30th uh, of this year, of course, uh, that being the Women's Coalition Party. What good do you think they'll do in Northern Ireland? Well, uh, they're a good advert for prostitution, uh, for politics, because of the way they got some of their votes. Uh, I mean, they were canvassing for more than votes, if you ask me. Uh, uh, and as far as I'm concerned, uh, uh, they're a party full of slappers. Uh, dull scroungers, and they'll do nothing for the people in Northern Ireland. Well, that seems a bit coarse or a bit harsh, but uh, Jerry Fit, do you agree with what Ian Paisley has said? Well, uh, some of it I agree with. I mean, I had one of them uh, Women's Coalition uh, members coming on to me uh, to get a vote, and uh, I told her politely to uh, fuck off. Uh, now, if she didn't have a hump in her back, that would have been a different matter. I would have considered giving her one. Uh, a vote, that is. Right, well, Jerry Adams, are they a no-hope party or what? Um, did you say a no-dope party? Sorry, hope party. Um, well, they do have a mandate to represent people in Northern Ireland. Um, so I don't see any reason why they don't hang in there and uh, try and expand uh, their party when the voting comes around next time. Right, well, Jerry, Fit, do you think the Women's Coalition Party can go forward and meet the needs of the people of this country? Well, they do meet the needs of the people of this country. Uh, I mean, they cook, wash dishes, shovel shit. What more can you ask for? Well, I was thinking maybe of getting the yard brush in the car, maybe wash. But anyway, John Hume, do you agree that uh, they need to do more? Well, I think the Women's Coalition Party uh, need to be respected for what they have done. It's not much, but it's a start. Uh, and we need to give them the, the chance to develop uh, into a fully-fledged party. Well, the ones that were canvassing outside my door were fully developed, all right. You want to see the tits on them? Right, now, come on, Dr. Paisley, there's no need for that. Uh, Dick Spring, do you think the Women's Coalition Party have anything to offer? A uh, big set of tits, and that's a bit your fucking let. Right, now, Jerry, come on, let Dick talk. Oh, fuck. Talking Dick. Go ahead, Dickie. Well, uh, I, I think the people in, in, in Ireland... Northern Ireland, you bollocks! Sorry, I mean in, the Northern, in Northern Ireland... Um, can benefit uh, immensely from a new party that has got new ideas, and uh, I hope that uh, they share their ideas with the people in the south of Ireland. Oh, listen to the spider, to the fly, trying to lure the women's coalition party into his dirty Republican web. I know what you're at, trying to drain their brains. Not that it would take long to do that, mind you, but we know what side of the fence you're on, Dickie. Right, now, Jerry Fitt, do you think the women's coalition party have anything to offer the Dublin government? No. Right, well, let's move on. That answers that. The Reverend William McRae, what, do you th what, what have you got to say in the Women's Coalition Party? Well, all I can say is that the Women's Coalition Party meet with the Dublin government. Then I put them in the same league as Sinn Féin. 
They're no good to Ulster. They're trying to sail us down the river. Fuck's sake, will I die? Stick a cork at it. Right, Jerry Adams, do you agree with that? Um, no, I certainly do not agree. Um, I, I don't like um, the same old rhetoric. Um, I don't like the same, uh, uh, same old shite that he comes out with. I don't like his singing, and I don't like his bigotry. And, uh, oh, listen to the man of the fucking world, Mr. Adams, man of the world, Jesus Christ, grow your beard a bit longer, and we'll all put you up for the night. Go ahead, Jerry. Right, now, come on, now. Now, if there's any women's, uh, any members of the Women's Coalition Party listening to this programme that say no one fucking likes us or supports us, in fact, everyone hates us, Jerry Fit. Aye, uh, they'd be fucking right, too. They're better going back to their knitting jumpers for their grandsons and granddaughters instead of trying to rally against the big boys. I mean, they're in a league of their own. They're, they're not with it at all. Right, well, Dr. Pizzi, I think we've all been guilty of sexist remarks about the Women's Coalition Party. Well, well politics is a tough job, uh, and it's no good running around with your finger up your arse and your mind in neutral in this game. Some of these little parties uh, are as bite as much use as a nice train a motorbike. Uh, and the sooner uh, they leave it to the more experienced parties, uh, like the Democratic Unionists, the better. Uh, Jerry Adams? Well, well, Sammy Wilson's a great advert uh, for politics and the DUP. Uh, John Lennon would have been proud of him. Flower power and all that shit. Uh, I mean, just think for a moment about the panel on the Democratic Unionist Party. Um, we have Ian Paisley, who won't budge an inch for the, the sake of our up-and-coming generation. Uh, we get the same old spiel and the same old rhetoric. Uh, and then we have Peter the Punt Robinson, who's always close by when Ian Paisley needs to go for a shite. Uh, uh, another bigot that has adopted to his leader's thinking. Uh, and then we have the, the Reverend William McRae, who does more singing than talking, and quite poorly at that. And then we have Sammy the Chippendale Wilson, uh, he likes to burn all for his uh, uh, party. Uh, and then we have Nigel Dodds, uh, Ken Dodds' son, the Diddy Man, who never changes his spiel or rhetoric. So I think the Women's Coalition Party have uh, absolutely nothing to fear from the same old repertoire from the boring DUP. Right, well, Ian Paisley, how do you respond to that? Uh, normally with a size 12 boot, but uh, fight fire with fire. Mr. Adams has done his utmost to upset members of my party, uh, so let's have a laugh at the Shed Fame lineup. Uh, firstly, we have Grizzly Adams, who's been in jail more times than the average prison warder, uh, uses violence to get his own way, and uses threats to try and get more demands of the British government. Uh, uh, he got a broadcasting ban put upon him because the ozone layer was being bombarded with pollutants. Uh, and then we move swiftly to Martin McGuinness, who is the Commandant in London Derry. His experience, well, about eight years in jail, and he's proud of it. Uh, and that's where he gets his education from as well. And it's probably the first time he's ever seen a television. Uh, we don't need to go into jail uh, to get these luxuries, uh, as you know. But then we have Alex take our mask off. He's the bulldog of Sinn Féin, again, another porridge lover. Uh, uh, who is very fond of hitting members of the RUC. But oddly enough, he's the one that ends up with a compensation claim. Uh, and then uh, uh, we, we go into Martin Amelior. Uh That man needs a good fucking feed. I mean, he's that then you can smell the shite through him. If he ate beans, he come out in lumps. Uh, I don't know whether he's been in prison or not, but uh, I'm sure it's only a matter of time. So the coalition party, the women's coalition party, have nothing to fear of Sinn Féin, because their track records are as bent as O.J. Simpson. Right, well, every bit of wonder this country's in a right fucking mess as it is. Now, Dick Spring, I believe you want to play a major role in the affairs of Northern Ireland. Why? Well, it's because I've made a right bollocks of the affairs in the south of Ireland. So I would like to try and make a... Let me tell you this here, Springy Dick. Not only do you want to interfere uh, with the affairs of Northern Ireland, but I have heard that you've put your name down to be the next Lord Mayor of Belfast. And if that does happen, son, I'll fucking chug you with that chain, you foreign bastard. Now, Dr. Paisley, please, please, I think you've got it all wrong. I think you've got the wrong end of the stick. You're going to get the wrong end of my boot now. Shut your fucking springy dick. 
Right now, come on, gentlemen, for God's sake. Uh, Dick Spring, is it true that you want to become the new Lord Mayor of Belfast, or is it not? Well, I, I don't see why, because, uh, why I shouldn't go for it, because, I mean, uh, look at the last uh, few mayors of Belfast. I mean, you had Sammy Wilson, who's uh, going to appear in Playboy magazine very shortly. Uh, and then you have Frank Miller with that uh, ridiculous uh, neck brace. I think that neck brace should have been uh, put around his mouth. And then we had Hugh Smith, who uh, wasn't bad. Mind you, a few elocution lessons uh, wouldn't have went amiss. And finally, you have the existing Lord Mayor, uh, who couldn't introduce the President Clinton properly at uh, the, the uh, uh, City Hall reception at last Christmas. Uh, maybe he was on a high. Uh, and I, d I do mean that uh, literally. Right, right. Well, the less said about that, the better. Jerry Adams, do you think Dick Spring can play an important role in Northern Ireland? Um, uh, um, he already has. Uh, he has applied the IRA. I, I beg your pardon. He has helped in uh, bringing about progress uh, in the talks. Uh, but they need to expand. Uh, and I personally think that uh, he's a valuable commodity. Uh, to the talks process, and uh, we hope he still uh, uh, keeps uh, coming on board uh, because we need his uh, valuable experience. Jerry Fit, would you agree with Jerry Adams? No, I would not, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Dick Spring's just another Fenian that wants the United Ireland, and that's the truth of it. Now, Jerry, um, I don't think that's called for. Uh, let me tell you, Mr. Adams, you've been licking Dicky Spring's arts dry, and that's why you're sticking up for him. Well, if that's the case, you've licked a brave few yards holes dry to become a lord. Well, at least the yards hole I was licking was clean. Right, come on now, gentlemen. Talking of our souls, Willie McRae, does Dick Spring have a role to play in Northern Ireland? Yes, he does have a role to play in Northern Ireland. He can fuck off back to the ghettos of the Republic of Ireland. And he can take his baggage with him. Because the Republic is a haven for the provost. And it's a filthy, paedophile priest that also stay down in the Republic and they get their ends away left, right and centre. They ought to have their bollocks chopped off. Fuck me, they might enjoy that. Right, actually, uh, Sir Patrick Mayhew, has Dick Spring done anything to enhance the peace process here? Yes, he has. He's uh, actually licked my arse for him. <laughs> no, beg your pardon, seriously. Uh, he's done fuck all for the uh, peace process here in Northern Ireland. Uh, and I think uh, he should go back to the Taoiseach John Brutal and uh, seek some advice on how to improve uh, the Dublin government's relationships uh, upon the British government. Right, well, John Hume, do you have a word of encouragement for Dick Spring? Yes, I do. And I think we need to give him the chance to prove his capabilities. I mean, he has shown that he has the integrity to take on such a, a tough job. Mind you, he's not succeeding at it, but uh, he'll get there in the end, uh, when I don't fucking know. Right, well, lots of uh, words of encouragement there. Dick Spring, will you resign as the Tonishta? No, I certainly won't. Uh, you, you, you must have heard uh, of the uh, growing support that I've had just here in the studio tonight. And my duties uh, I will continue to do. Uh, 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 let me say, hold on now, Dr. Pizzi, a final word from you. Just go ahead. Well, well, I have to say that Dick Spring's presence here is like uh, showing a red rag to the bull. Uh, and one of these days, the bulls are going to ram their horns into his midriff. And if he knows what's good for him, he'll pack his bags and get off our planet because he's not wanted. Fuck, that's not obvious or anything, is it? Right now, Dr. Pearcey, we're going to talk about the, the politicians' worries over the BSE in cattle. Now, we're all fucking horrified by it. But, uh, Dr. Pearcey, uh, this should be quite close to your heart because you obviously represent the farmers and all the rest of it. The farmers in Northern Ireland are getting into an all-time low as far as exporting beef. So what can we do to help them? Uh, uh, ignore them. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. Uh, I say that uh, the British government uh, are to blame for this disaster. Uh, they should lift the ban on beef in Northern Ireland. Uh, I mean, my wife Eileen doesn't uh, take the beef anymore. Fuck, that's not what I heard. I heard you divert it, you lucky big bullock. Uh, Mr. Fit, uh, let me tell you something. You'll be fucking paying a visit to the dentist if you don't shut your trap. I was only joking, for God's sake, there's no need to get your knickers in the truth. Right, uh, as I was saying, 
Uh, my wife doesn't touch it anymore. I, I take it you're talking about the beef still, Doctor. But yes, I am. Don't be trying to be funny. Uh, even the daughter, Rhonda, uh, doesn't take the beef anymore either. Well, well, Sammy Wilson could tell you otherwise. Uh, look, Beardy Buck, you better shut your mouth, son. And you wouldn't know what fucking beef tasted like anyway, not unless you'd done an armed robbery to buy it. Right, come on now, Dr. Paisley. Has the BSE scaring beef, uh, has it affected the troubles in uh, Northern Ireland in any such case? Yes, of course it has. It's uh, going to bring about unemployment. And I think uh, uh, there's more troubles with the ceasefire because farmers are struggling to make ends meet. Uh, uh, they have to take on the trade of Jerry Adams and do a few armed robberies to get by. Uh, Mr. Adams, your response? Um, excuse me. Uh, I don't do such things. Uh, I do, however, uh, count the takings. Uh, uh, and that's not the issue here. We are talking about someone's livelihood. Uh, uh, your livelihood, all right. You're a livelihood, all right. Underlined livelihood. Uh, say no more about that. Right, now, well, Dick Spring... How can we help these poor farmers? Well, I've, I've never heard of a poor farmer, to be honest with you, but uh, I think the people in the north uh, should mix their cattle with the uh, uh, people in the south. Holy oh, fuck, listen to this. We don't want fucking Catholic cows in Northern Ireland. And we don't want to start to enter breed cows either. But, it, but it's going to help the farmers. Fuck the farmers! They don't want Republican cattle. Uh, uh, they want British beef only. Now you just have to listen to Dickie Spring. He wants Protestants and Catholics from both sides of the border to get together. Now he wants fucking cows. Uh, the next thing he'll want is Catholic brains transplanted into Protestant bodies. That's not going to happen, Dickie. Right now, come on, Dr. Pesey, settle it down a bit. Uh, Jerry Fit, would you still eat beef? Well, uh, if I could reach it, yes. <laughs> money being, uh, money joking. Right, we're talking about the beef that you buy in the butcher's lord fit. Oh, right, all right, I know what you're talking about. Oh, I love sinking the beef. There's nothing better than a two-pounder of beef stuck in the back of your gullet. Right, well, Mr. Fit, would you stop your kids from eating beef? Well, uh, my kids are over 20 years old. Uh, they can have anal sex with whoever they want. I, I take it you're talking about oral sex, Mr. Fit. I, I was talking about beef, the meat that you eat out of the butcher's shop, do you dig? Why, do you want a fucking fair scrap? I knock your bollocks in. Jerry, go a fucking sleep. You don't know what planet you're on, son. Right, now, John Hume, will there be help for the farmers? Well, what we need to do is get dialogue between all farmers from all sections of the community. We need togetherness to defeat this serious problem. Fuck's sake. You sound like an advert for the Royal Irish Regiment, for God's sake. Mr. Hume, can you not change your same old rat mix up? Because that's all I get, I do. Right now, Jerry Adams, how serious is the problem with beef in Northern Ireland? Well, it's very serious. I mean, I have to go to the Republic of Ireland to get a pound of fucking sausages uh, at the cost of one punt. And it cost me £40 in petrol to get there. Uh, mind you, it's not so bad uh, when you've hijacked someone else's car. But um, the problem is very worrying, and uh, I think, uh, like Dick Spring says, uh, we need to uh, we need integrated fields for your cattle. Sir Patrick Mayhew, uh, what can the government do to help the farmers and help them in this crisis? Um, nothing. Uh, I think it's a case of uh, waiting until all the farmers in Northern Ireland uh, start uh, committing suicide, and then the government shall do. Uh, it's best at, at, at that moment in time. And that'll probably be the turning point uh, in which the problem will be resolved. Yes, yes. You and you're a puppet for the British government, you fat bastard. You don't care about the hard-working farmers. All you're worried about is John Major's backside, if it's clean or not. Isn't so that right? Right, now, Jerry Fit, there have been a lot of culls lately. Is that the right way forward? Well, I haven't heard of any killings. No, I mean culls, Mr. Fit. Culls as in slaughter of young or old cattle. Oh, fuck, I read. I th sorry, I thought you were trying to be killing there. Cullins or whatever the fuck. Um, well, the problem is down to that there. Uh, it has to be done. Mind you, uh, how many people in Northern Ireland have died as a result of BSE? I mean, I haven't heard of any. Right, well, the Reverend William McRae, you're very fond of your beef. Uh, should it be banned in Northern Ireland or not? Well, let me say, I, I don't think it should be banned from the the north of Ireland, but the south of the border should be banned, because I believe the Republicans are coming over the border and deliberately infecting our cows. Um, um, 
Why, have you noticed something strange about your wife or what? Don't you fucking say anything about my... Come on, I gentlemen, sort of it. Go on, then, for fuck's sake, settle it. I'll slap his face. Hold on, Mr. Pacey, this is my fucking right. Mr. Adams, you say anything about my wife again, I'll stick my boot in your beardy bollocks. Great gentlemen, come on. That's the end of the issue. Right, now, we, we were here uh, talking about Sammy Wilson's antics earlier on, as you know, but another unionist was in the news for all the wrong reasons. Ken McGuinness, of course, as you all know, Florida, an old-age pensioner, because he was making too much noise. Ian Paisley, what do you say about that? Uh, good on him, because uh, if I heard my divers banging, uh, I'd fucking crack up, and I know that. But when you say banging, do you mean what, what I think you mean? Yes, uh, uh, you think right. I'm jealous because I've been celibate for three years. Celibate here and celibate there, Dr. Vis, I'm only joking you. Now, the big man, uh, Ken, that is, Ken McGuinness, now, he, he, he hit this pensioner who was only five foot two inches tall and he was age 69. Jerry Fit, do you think it was fair for Ken McGuinness to flatten him? Uh, no, I do not, because uh, uh, he was in the army and uh, that doesn't give him the right to knock a, an old large bollocks in. I mean, uh, he wouldn't take me on. Uh, uh, and I've only got one good eye. Uh, and that's the eye you shout out of. Right now, come on, Dr. Paisley. When you spoke to Ken McGuinness, Dr. Paisley, what did he say about this fight? Well, uh, Ken said to me that uh, he was confronted by a man who was six foot two, uh, and he was built like a shite house door, and apparently this man had uh, an iron bar in his hands, uh, ready for action. So Ken done a kung fu kick straight up into the man's forehead, uh, Ken McGuinness then did a cartwheel and a somersault and unfortunately missed and collapsed into a heap of shite in the corner. Uh, and that's what he told me. Right, well, Jerry Adams, do you see it like that? Well, I wasn't there. No, I mean, do you actually, do you think that's what really happened? Uh, no, I think Ken McGuinness is uh, uh, watching too much of uh, Stephen Seagal's movies. Um, from what uh, I was told, um, Ken McGuinness got his balls rolled by this poor old pensioner, and, I mean, McGuinness should uphold the law and not break it. A bit like yourself, Mr. Adams, a good citizen and all the rest of it. Well, I wouldn't go that far. I mean, I've had my ins and outs. Well, I think you've uh, been more in and uh, than out, Mr. Adams, if you don't mind me saying. I in your fucking wife, Paddy. Right, now, come on, now, Sir Patrick Mayhew, I don't think there's any need for this debate to be lord like that. Right, gentlemen, this... Stay on course here. Chris Eubank, do you think Big Bad Ken would make it in the boxing ring? I don't think this man should be judged until the facts are released. Mm, I do, however, know that uh, this, his opponent was 69 years old. He had a plastic leg, an arm, and uh, he was possibly blind. Well, it could have been worse. He could have had a fucking speech impediment. Right now, Willie McRae, will this bring you in here? Was Big Ken right to flatten this pensioner? Well, I know Ken's a Christian man, and I'm sure he did not beat this shite out of this pensioner for nothing. He must have been provoked to the extreme because I have known Ken for a long time and I've never known him to lift his hand in his life. That's why his house is so untidy. Right now, come on, I thank you for that. But uh, John Hume, do you believe that Ken McGuinness defended himself in a, a fair-minded manner? I really don't know. Uh, both of these men should have... Uh had dialogue before going into battle, that's what we need, is communication and a willingness to articulate each other's needs, not going around and knocking each other's fucks in. Uh, Jerry Adams, do you think Ken McGuinness will be brought to court over this uh, uh, incident? Well, um, the chances of that happening are equal to Shergar running in the next national. Um, I think Ken McGuinness, personally, uh, should resign. Um, he's brought a, dis uh, brought a disgrace upon his party and uh, upon the people he's meant to represent. And just because he was a member of the Useless Defence Regiment, um, uh, 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 correct you there, Mr. Adams, it was the Ulster Defence Regiment. Oh, fuck, I didn't know that. Uh, uh, it doesn't give him the right to get away with it. Well, Mr. Adams, let me tell you something. If Ken McGuinness has done wrong, it would never match the wrongdoings of yourself and your sidekicks of the IRA. Uh, but I'm not a member of the IRA. Ah, but you're the fucking leader of the IRA, aren't you, you bollocks? Right now, gentlemen, come on. I'll stop us, fuck us. Right, fuck off, me. Right, come on now, break it up. Leave, leave his beard alone. Come on, I'll stick my boot in him. 
Right now, come on, gentlemen, this is turning into a fucking farce. Right now, um, the both used to be honest, we are barking up the wrong tree because I, I understood that Martin McGuinness is a leader. Uh, Patrick Mayhew, what's your opinion on this? Well, I don't agree that Martin McGuinness is the leader of operations uh, in Northern Ireland. Oh, uh, uh, you'll be getting an operation if you don't fuck up um, on your back. Right, come on now, gentlemen. Sir Patrick Mayhew, I wanted your opinion on Ken McGuinness. Should he resign? No, I regard uh, Ken McGuinness as a loving family man who uh, wouldn't hurt a fly. Well, if that's the case, he should resign as well, because uh, that man, or should I say, that old age pensioner, had 22 stitches in his lip. He had a broken leg, so I think Ken McGuinness is uh, related to Martin McGuinness. There's a wee bit of rough in the both of them. Right, well, Barry McGuigan, do you think, uh, do you think uh, Ken McGuinness uh, could make it in the ring? No, I don't even think he could make it over the fucking ropes. Um, he's a pearly boy, he needs to get his act together, and I think he needs a bit of his own medicine. Barry, son, let me tell you something. You'll be on fucking medicine for the rest of your life if you don't shit your face, because all you've done has been excreting silage all over the fucking place. We've heard enough of your verbal diarrhea, so could you fucking shut up? Right, right, thank you very much, gentlemen. That's the end of this debate. Right, Ian Paisley, first and foremost, do you condemn the actions of the Loyalists before and after the 12th of July during the drum crease standoff? Certainly not. Uh, uh, I condemn the RUC and uh, the so called British Army who fueled that situation, uh, and I blame the residents of the Garpaki Road for not compromising. I mean, they should have uh, uh, brought uh, us tea and sandwiches down for nothing, instead of charging us. I mean, uh, we made Drum Cree a fucking tourist attraction. So what the fuck uh, uh, are you barking about? I am not going to uh, uh, condemn anybody. Right, well, do you not condemn the loyalists rioting and looting? I certainly do not. I, I got a cheap television out of it. Uh, uh, so I was happy enough. Right, well, do you not think that the Loyalists started it, or was it started by nationalists? Well, Jerry Adams, you answer that. Well, uh, um, it was started, obviously, by Loyalists, uh, as a disgrace. And I, I, I can't say that I'm surprised with what uh, Ian Paisley has come out with. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, Ian Paisley and Sammy Wilson, the stripper Sammy Wilson, uh, incited violence to get their own way. By that I mean... Cheap TVs for Ian and a cheap suit for Sammy. Uh, mind you, he fucking needed them. Right, well, John Hume, who in your opinion started all this trouble? Well, I think it was fucking Keen Billy. Look, what we need to do is compromise and understand each other's uh, way of thinking. We need both both sections of our communities to get together. Well, for fuck's sake, John, would you change your record now? You're talking shit again, son. Right now, come on, Jerry, let him speak. Go ahead, John Hume. Well, you see, this is exactly what the problem is. We can't get agreement, and by agreement, we need everybody and all our sections to agree. Right, Mr. Hume, I must agree with Jerry Fitt. I think you should change the fucking record. Right, now, the Reverend William McRae, the standoff at Drum Cree cost the security forces an estimated £10 million. How do you account for that? Well, let me tell you something, son. It never cost me a fucking brass penny. Uh, all it cost me was my right to walk down there uh, at the Gavaki Road. That's all it cost me. But at the end, we succeeded in walking down there. Right, well, Jerry Fitt, do you think these flashpoint marches should be banned? Well, uh, I must admit, I, I do have a bit of sympathy for the arrangement. Uh, every road they want to march on, they have to ask permission. Um, I mean, what happens if an orange man wants to go down and buy a pint of milk at uh, uh, his, his shop, and it's up at the Catholic end of the town? Does he have to go and have a fucking residence meeting before he gets a pint of milk? And I mean, if that's the case... Uh, if Jared Brace is there, it looks like the orange man will be drinking fucking black tea for the rest of his life. Right, well, Dick Spring, what, ca what can we do to prevent these flashpoint marches and parades? Well, I, I, I think the people of Northern Ireland uh, will have to negotiate the right to march uh, wherever they want. Right, 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 let me tell you, what the fuck are you, what has I got to do with you, Dickie? This is not your concern or your business, so why don't you get out of Ulster Get on an Ulster bus and go down to Dublin where you belong. Well, actually, I don't need to get myself a, a bus to get home because I have a car in the car park. Oh, that's what you think, son. See the smoke out of that window there? And it's not even July. Right now, come on. Jerry Adams, 
Do you think the Orangemen will get something sorted out for next year's marching season? Um, not unless Hoover's giving away free flights in July. Um, I can't see it uh, being resolved. Uh, they wouldn't like it. Now, let me put it to them. They wouldn't like it if the Republicans uh, were to march down the Newton Ard Road. Well, uh, I don't know about that, Mr. Adams. I think the Protestant community uh, would relish uh, uh, at the thought that you would want to uh, come down to the Newton Arts Road. So why don't you go ahead and arrange it, son? But make sure you bring your fucking crash helmets. Right now, news to give it over. This is really getting out of order. Jerry Fit, do you think, who do you think, sorry, is responsible for this log jam? Well, I think the IEC and their heavy handed ways towards people. I mean, the IEC uh, are bad. For example, they fired 300 uh, baton rounds uh, at Protestants compared to 2,500 at Catholics. So I think the IUC were trigger happy in nationalist, uh, nationalist areas and uh, there should be a ban on plastic bullets and they should learn the RUC arm to arm combat. Jerry Adams, uh, w- would that be your sentiments? Well, for the first time, Jerry Fitz got something right. Um, the, the, the RUC uh, should fight arm to arm uh, and man to man, but they don't. Right, but, but the Nationalist Jerry Adams weren't exactly fighting bare-fisted either. I mean, I saw one particular gentleman with a baseball bat in his hands. Um, but that particular fellow was uh, playing a game in the park. On what, how to take an RUC man's head off his fucking shoulders? Well, that's the name of the game. Right, well, Sir Patrick Mayhew, do you not accept along with the British government uh, the blame for, for overturning a serious decision on letting the Orangemen walk down the Gervaki Road? No, we do not make any apologies for mass disruption, injury, uh, destruction or intimidation. That was the fault of the IUC. I, I beg your pardon, I mean, oh, I meant the nationalist and the loyalists alike. I mean, uh, c- could you tell me exactly what uh, JCB was doing down at Drum Creek? wasn't there to uh, 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 dig up some roads or whatever else. It was purely there to provoke serious riots. No, the JCP was sure to dig your fucking grave, son, if you'd have came anywhere near the place. But unfortunately, you didn't. Right now, Dr. Pacey, some Catholic businesses made soup and stew and sandwiches and whatever else for the orange men. What do you say to that? That was a nice little note. Well, uh, uh, the soup was nice. The stew was stinking. Uh, 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 and all I got in my sandwiches was butter. So I wasn't too pleased. But having said that, uh, they had a made way as quick as they made sandwiches. None of this would have happened. Right, well, Jerry Adams, do you think David Trimble helped matters? Uh, no, he did not. Uh, he stirred the shade up and provoked the nationalist uh, people. Uh, running around like a hard man with uh, a silly mobile phone in his hand instead of uh, getting in the dialogue through the proper channel. Well, that's all we've got to say on this matter for now. Thank you. Now, Jerry Adams, uh, Sinn Féin got a massive 22,000 votes uh, in West Belfast on May the 30th uh, in the elections. Why? Well, well, a lot of hard work and a lot of costumes. And uh, I think the nationalist people realise that uh, uh, we are the party that will eventually bear fruit. Uh, you mean you're going to get Dale Winton running in your next elections? Let me say this to you, Mr. Adams. I don't know how to fuck... You got 22,000 votes in West Belfast when there's only 17,000 Catholics in it. So tell me how you done that, sonny boy. Well, I, I, I'm glad you're warming to me by calling me sonny boy. I'll warm your fucking ear for you, sonny. Don't try it. That's right, come on now, gentlemen. Let him finish. Let him finish. Well, uh, I was a bit fucking sore that. Uh, well, uh, as I promised uh, everyone uh, up in West Belfast, the IRA uh, would call another ceasefire. Uh, But the British government has uh, put obstacles in our way, so therefore it was difficult to go to the IRA with nothing, except preconditions. Right, well, Jerry Fitt, no doubt Sinn Féin got lots of votes. How and why? Well, uh, it's amazing uh, what you can uh, get if you've got a gun put the the side of your head. Uh, Yes, probably a fucking sorry, that's what you'd get. But uh, 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 we'd be very surprised in the next election. If Sinn Féin were to get uh, the same amount of votes, uh, because if they don't get a ceasefire, then uh, as far as I'm concerned, they're bellixed. Right, well, Jerry Adams, how do you get so many votes and how did you get them? Well, Alex Maskey 
uh, went and footed first thing that morning. Uh, and then he went to the gym uh, uh, and lost uh, two stones, uh, not the ones between his legs. So a slimmer Alex Maskey went and uh, voted that afternoon. Mind you, a few UC men, uh, they, they were there, they were taking backhanders. Uh, you'll get a backhander across a bake now, Mr. Adams, you're pushing the boat out. Uh, did you vote yourself? Uh, on a number of occasions, yes. Right, Ian Paisley, you think there was a lot of uh, personation that uh, was taking place here at these polling stations? Yes, there was, uh, they certainly were. I mean, the Sinn Féin uh, 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 repertoire uh, were buying medical cards for a pad, they were buying passports for two pads, and I say they should install television cameras at all polling stations, that would cut the nonsense right out of them. Right, well I see, well Jerry Fit, uh, how do you think we can stop the cheating at the polling stations? Well, I don't think we should have any polling stations. And I don't think we should have any votes either. Well, thank you very much for a very intricate answer there. Thank you. You've broken up from school and waist and combed your wavy hair. That'll be a first. Sammy, are you contemplating going out somewhere? The word out on the street is that you may not be around. Well, I'd be glad to hear that. Sammy. Please put that camera down. I mean, I don't know what the fuck made him do that in the first place. What about his bollocks hanging out? Now in some foreign land you may do as you please. Just write to yourself. And if it's done in private, then begging he'll be pleased. You're fucking right, I'm pleased. You're right. If you and Sharon Rivers plan once more to let it flow. Well, then pull the tits of her, boy. There's some tits in her. Oh, Sam. You'd be wise to go. Oh yes, go like a rabbit. <laughs> now get him back to nature may just be a better way. But having photos taken is just that I'd have to say. I was a very silly indeed. And it won't be long before the negatives get around. Oh, and I've got the theme missing one. Oh, Sammy. Put the camera up your arse. Please put that camera down. Look at gob shit. The DUP are raging at the side of Sammy's bum. He might have washed it first. He could have blown his chances. The party's faithful stun. And if they had some guns, they would have run him out of town. Well, I can land him a couple of guns, no problem. Oh, Sammy. Hold the girl. Don't take your knickers down. That dirty fucky. Oh, Sammy. Dirty get. Right, Sonic right. Bomb. Shut up. Pull them under pants up. Run around Pick your legs hanging in. Are they berries under your arse up? Aye, chuck berries. I won't get that arse of yours from that dirty base. Leave my own first box now. They're jealous a whole lot, eh?